Hello and welcome everyone. We're back here. Today we're playing some Mardu. After playing Esper all week, I decided I want to switch it up. So we are going to play ourselves some Mardu, but we have a special guest for this Mardu list today. We are playing our new friend, Kroxa, Titan of Death's Hunger. Now Kroxa in the gen list turned out to be okay. He wasn't anything spectacular, but he was definitely fun. Um... So, I don't know what two cards I just actually took out, but I'll fix that in a minute. Anyway, yeah, there we go. Anyway, the list here is pretty straightforward. So we sell some bolts, some thought seizes, inquisitions, some paths. Two dread bores still. I like dread bore even though it's sorcery speed. It still does the job really well at killing things. <clears throat> and I like the reach for planeswalkers. Um, but if you care less about Planeswalkers and want more of the instant speed, which, I mean, we're not really an instant speed deck, so I don't think it matters too much, you could switch to Terminate, or you could play a 3-mana one, which I recommend much less. So we're playing the Ransack Labs. I'm still keeping the Pack Rats from Anthony's list from last month. Um, I'm a big fan of these. We cut down to two of them, though, so we can fit the Croxes. Um, we're playing two Souls, two Lilies, a Batter Skull, a Light and Shadow. Um, I was tempted to go with Feast and Famine after... Feast and Famine success against Amulet Titan, but I kind of want to stick with the Light and Shadow because we're playing Kroxa, Pack Rat, Season Pyro. We're playing a lot of cards we want to get back, and we're going to be put in the graveyard. Two Colgon's Commands, two Season Pyro Mentors, and we still have two Blood Moons. Now, we cut one more Shambling Vents for an extra Blood Crypt so I can have a little bit more red sources um, as opposed to white for our Kroxa. Um, we also are going to be less likely to want to just be jamming Blood Moon every game with Titan, because we can't necessarily buy it back. But we do have a lot of ways of reoccurring it, such as the Sword and Colgon's Command. So just because we Blood Moon and can't get Double Black necessarily, or don't get Double Black early necessarily, doesn't mean we can't still use his ability. Uh, sideboard's the same as last time. One Damnation, two EEs, two Stony Silences. Um, I said in the last video I wasn't too big... On Sony Silence, um, still not a huge fan of it, but I've played against enough Urza, I'm going to go ahead and leave it for now. Two Rest in Peace, three Brutalities, one Damnation, um, one Blood Moon, one Chandra, two Campbell, and a Sword of Fire and Ice. Now, Kroxa is a little awkward with Rest in Peace, so that's something I kind of want to change, but I'm not really sure... Hmm. You know what? Let's do this. Hmm. No, I think against the Graveyard X Rest in Peace is just too good not to play. So we'll just have to be careful. We'll have to cut down our Kroxas with, our, with Rest in Peace, I think. Now, you know what? For this league, let's go ahead and switch to Ley Lines. Two of these, and let's go ahead and cut. I'm going to cut the fire and ice for this league. So we'll play three ley lines um, two EEs, and then we have the Blood Moon, Chandra, two Cannonball, and a Damnation. Um, Cannonball's been really sweet lately, I really like it. Still iffy on the Stony Silences, but I'm going to keep them, like I said, and we'll see. Um, without Rest in Peace Leyline, hopefully it'll be better, and that doesn't interfere with Kroxa so much, or the Lingering Souls, or Season Pyro. So, we'll see how this goes. Uh, we're going to play some matches here. I hope you guys enjoy, and we'll be back in just a minute. Alright, here we're going to be on the play here for round number one. Um, I think I'm going to mulligan. This hand's not very good. If Lightning Bolts are good, then this hand might be good, but... Having both our equipments with nothing else going on is a little awkward. This hand's obviously worse. Alright, this hand's fine. We're going to put planes. I think sword back. So this ensures us a decent amount of mana. We're going to go ahead and thought seize here. 
All right, so they are Jeskai Ascendancy combo. Well, that is a problem for sure. Well, they only have one mana. Hmm. They do have the gr revival here. Let's we'll just take the mana carry. Let's just take carry to try to make their mana more difficult. They drew a bird, which is a little bit annoying. Um, but we're gonna kill the bird here. Like I said, we just want to make it so hard enough, as hard as possible for them to produce mana and to keep playing. Jesus Christ. Well, that's uh, certainly what we're going to do, I guess. Jesus. Oh my gosh. Finally, they found another land. Glittering Wish. Aldomri's call. All right. Well, now we're we're just drawing lands here. Um, <clears throat> I mean, we didn't even if we would have kept a sword over a land, we still don't have a threat here. On the bright side, we have path for almost anything they get. Okay, we can't we can't path carry it. Oh. Come on, cast it. Mm hmm. Um. Let's just get the godless run, I guess. Well, I mean, if we're going to win, I think this is about the only way that's going to happen. This is certainly not a matchup I think we're particularly favored in. Um,. Yeah, definitely not a matchup I think we're particularly lucky in, or favored in. We've been lucky their mana sources just have not lined up very well. I mean... This is definitely a situation where I wish this was a push, not a path. Because I'd much rather be pushing birds than pathing birds, because they get land still. All right, they're deep in thought here on the Serum Visions. So we know three cards in their hand, and we don't know three of them. We really want to draw some kind of action here. One card on bottom, one card on top. They did not seem to draw a land here. Well. Guess we're going to be discarding a path to exile here.
Hmm. God, we have killed four mana creatures here. All right, the discard Noxious Revival. Ugh, this is tough. I still stand by trying to keep them off mana sources. I think that's our best way to win this matchup. Um, another revival, putting birds back on top. Interesting since they scryed to the top. It's a little surprising to me. Alright, let's draw. We're going to plus here. Discard Cerulean Wisps. Attack for four in the air. Obviously no blocks. Down to ten. If they have a land here, they can go play Jeskai Ascendancy this turn. Hmm. A carry it's it. Okay. Let's get rid of one of their mana dorks. And then pressure them some more here. I'm just going to go and fetch grab the swamp here. I think the card we'd really like to top deck the most right now would be Kroxa, to be honest. So if opponent goes land, Jeskai Ascendancy, they may just not have the pure cards to go off from this point. Alright, there's another bird. Well, there's a pack rat. It's plus... Discard Glittering Wish, so they got two cards in hand. They go to two. All right. Let's see if we can close this one out or if they're going to get us. They drew a land, so if they have one mana spell and Just Guy Sensei, they can go off this turn, potentially. Okay, I mean, they still have to find a cantrip every single time. Uh oh. Echo of Eons. Anamorphos. That's a good one. This really makes me sad that we were two points of damage off from killing them. Alright, well, I think it's pretty safe to say they got this one in the bag. Yeah, I mean, I definitely feel pretty... I feel like it's pretty safe to say this one's over with.
Yep. Yep. I mean, at this point, remember they have this echo in the graveyard still. That's honestly kind of what our hopes is that we, uh, that they have to echo and we get to, we draw a lightning bolt and get to bolt them before they can do anything else. Because, I mean, they got to cast, what, fifth, uh, six, eight more spells? All right, well, that's going to do it. That's going to give get rid of our only out here. So, and at this point, they're not going to fizzle. They have the echo. So, we're just going to concede now that we can't cast any spells. All right, so. EE -E to start with. Um, Camball, definitely. Ley Lines, definitely. Blood Moon's a consideration here. Damnation's even in consideration here. Um, honestly... Pretty much everything except Brutality, since cards we want to take are creatures and enchantments. Alright, so Light and Shadow, I definitely want out. Um, Path to Exile, I don't think is great here. Leona has potential. Hmm. Maybe we're just trying to close out the game. I mean, I definitely think... Alright, I definitely want two more... I definitely want these Ley Lines in as well. Do we just cut Lily? I mean, Lily's our only real way of getting rid of... Um... Maybe we cut the commands? Lily's our only real way of getting rid of Karyatids. Other than the EEs, I guess. Yeah, let's let's try it this way. I think this will be okay. Um, well, I don't want to really lean extra into the Blood Moon plan. Alright, this hand's fine. I like this one. Um... It's not amazing. In fact, actually, maybe we should mulligan. Because we don't have a turn one play here. Yeah, I think this is wrong. I should have mulliganed. Yep, and they're keeping on seven. Certainly not good for us. Let's just get God of the Shrine tapped. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we should have been looking for a hand with a turn one disruption. I was really hoping this EE would be able to... Late line, okay. I was really hoping this EE would be good enough. Here's hoping they just drop two more one drops here this turn. Nope, Metamorphose. Okay. Glittering Wish. That doesn't make much sense why they want just Glittering Wish. Why they Metamorphose then Glittering Wish. Hmm. Is this one a cantrip? I guess that makes some sense. Alright, if they don't play another land or creature, I think I'm actually going to EE and blow up the Noble. Um, yeah, we're blowing up the Noble this turn. That, that makes this decision even easier. Yeah, 
Yeah, that makes that decision a whole lot easier here. All right, birds. And a land. Okay. That's interesting. So they had the bird last turn. Okay. Um, here's what I'm thinking. Let's go Silent Clearing. Go Season Pyro. Ditching these two. All right, well... It's not the best draw in the world. Hmm. Okay. Let's hope they just pass the turn and we draw a land. Well, unfortunately, I think that's close to we're getting to uh, this working the way we want it to. Actually, let's just go Stoneforge. Or do we put this in a place so we can blow this up next turn? Yeah, let's put this in a place so we can blow it up next turn. Alright. Because next turn I can attack for two, blow it up, play Stoneforge. And then I can actually get Light and Shadow, I think. They're going to get a chance to set, set themselves up in a better position after this, that's for sure. But I don't think there's much else we can do. And this guarantees we can blow up the just guy ascendancy this next turn so the other way around does not ensure it um no they drew third land croaks a titan of hunger let's blow this Stoneforge. Oh, it's got the sword. Dun -dun -er. All right, well, we can put this into play next turn at least. Yeah, they got five cards. I'm having a hard time believing they're not going to get us here with another Jeskai Ascendancy or something. Uh, you see, now I feel stupid. Now I feel like we should have waited. I mean, we could just hard cast Leyline of the Void. How do we feel about that? No, because they don't use our graveyard very much. Listen, they don't have another... They don't currently have a creature in a play, so we're going to do this. Fuck. That is certainly a problem. The awkward moment, if I would have played Leyline, we could have stopped that. Alright, Glittering Wish. What are they getting with Wish here? Bombers call. Are they going to go land call? No. And let's go one, two, three, four, five. Oh, wait, what? One. All right, there's that. Put it into play. Hmm. 
Alright, five ya. Ah, this is so nerve wracking. Okay. Um, after that game, I still don't feel like Blood Moons are bad. Maybe Leyline's not as good. But all three of them so that we can hit it. Alright, let's let's run it. I think we got a little lucky there. <laughs> um Alright, I mean We got a black, a red, two croxes, we have an EE, -E, and a ley line. Alright. Hopefully they go Birds of Paradise and we get to kill it. Nice. It's a very dead thought sees. That's okay. It happens. Well, this game they seem to have mana. Do I get black, white, or black, red? I think let's take our draw step and see what we draw. Alright, we're getting black, red. Yep, and unfortunately, because of the way Kroxa is... Um, nope, don't know. I was about to say something, but I have no idea. Alright, well... Okay. Taking one. What's better, kill their one drop or get rid of the last card in their hand? I vote kill their one drop. Because they can't go off as hard if they don't have a creature. And I mean, as far as next turn goes, we get a Croaks of them again. Hmm. Well, if it's not something they can cast this turn, they're about to lose it. <clears throat> oh, well, maybe not. They haven't. I forgot they have two cards in hand right now. I'm dumb. Wait, what? Oh, Domri's call, okay. Black source. Yeah, let's get a constant source of discard into play. Okay, and they're done. So, alright, um... As far as Kroxa or Lily, which one was better there? Um, Lily means that this turn, the following turn, if we hit another red or black source, we can bring back Kroxa. Um, also, this also means we get to basically lightning bolt them. Um, but yeah, I don't know. This matchup I feel like is pretty tough, but we have the pieces that we can win it with. Um, not sure if Leyline's right in this situation. Haven't played this matchup enough to say, honestly. But it felt pretty good, so we'll be back in just a minute with the next round. Alright, we're on the play here. 
Um, is this the same person as last time? Nope, I'm just crazy. I guess we're just playing against this person a bit. Alright, um... This is fine. It's not impressive. We got a lot of, a lot of removal. I think being on the play that this hand's okay. If we were on the draw, I think we might consider throwing it back, though. Um, they do mulligan, which does kind of... Uh, it makes it more enticing for us to try and find a discard spell, but obviously we didn't know they were going to mulligan when we kept our opener. So, not much we can do here. They open on Misty Rainforest. I'm going to get a Swamp here. I don't know why I'm fetching in a turn. It doesn't really make a difference. <clears throat> And do I want to ransack? Yeah, I think I want to ransack. We have to get spell pierced. Oh my god. Uh, I guess I'll take a fetch land. I mean, the bright side. If we have to go for a blood moon, we're we're pretty well set up for that. Alright, so they could be Storm, they could be the Blue-Red Moon Breach deck. They could be a lot of different decks at this point. Changes nothing, unfortunately. Alright, well, I'm going to go ahead and get a Plains here. Like I said, we have another Black Source, another Red Source, so we're not too worried about that. Um, and if we had a Kroxa in hand, we would obviously care a little bit about getting a Plains, but... I think I'm going to try to just jam this sword. And our opponent's going to counter it. They're going to counter it. But it's possible they don't bother countering it since we have nothing in play. And getting counter doesn't really matter because we're not doing anything anyway. Um, all, our entire hand is interactive spells. Lonely Sandbar. I don't know what deck plays Lonely Sandbar. I mean, I guess any of them technically could. Jesus Christ. Oh my god, that's not what I want to play. Oh, deck. Why you be this way? Okay. Yeah. Well, they do cut us off red for a turn. So they, they're teamer, all right? All right, running six. So we picking up a oh, misty. Okay. All right, so I'm pretty sure we're gonna try to kill running six this turn. I'm gonna lead on the Inquisition here to start with. Alright, well that's pretty terrifying. Definitely makes me curious what they have in their hand there. Alright, so it looks like they're going to remand our Dread Boar here. Or it could be an actual hard counter, but... Remand, okay. Alright, this does suck because that means they're going to get more value out of their Renin 6. Yep, getting the Lonely Sandbars back is something we definitely aren't happy about. We're going to try to field our Red Source again, which I will go and get a Black Source. This is a little annoying, given the fact that we are... Very much just starting to run out of Red Sources. Hardcast Force and Negation, I guess. Alright, let's... Down with him. And at this point, we really need to draw a Kroxa, a Season Pyro. Okay, not Season Pyro now. Jesus Christ. So they're just playing, like, Team or Control. Fuck me. Alright, 
Yeah, so there's like straight up full on dedicated teamer control. Yep. Pick back up Lonely Sandbar, I'm assuming. Yep. Stoneforge. Yes, get Batter Skull. Equip. Unfortunately, we don't even have a Kroxa in our graveyard here. Or a Pyromancer or anything. We just have one, two, three, four, five, six lands. So, Teamer Reclam. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. If you ever feel like what you're doing is worthless, just remember, you're quite honestly playing a match here where I don't think we can win this game if we tried. Confirmed, never casting a spell again. Uh, yep. Alright, I mean... And, like, the worst part here is at this point we got to protect our basic... Our last red land. Yeah, because we have one left. Jesus. We got one red fetch land, fetchable land left, and it's an arid mesa. Yep. Yeah, they just... They've buried us here. Yep. We're not beating the search for this cons, I don't think. Yeah, alright. I have I've seen enough. Even if we get a hit through it, we're just not getting a hit through anytime soon, I don't think. We might have conceded a little early there, but I just it doesn't feel like it's worth it here. Um and they're a control deck, so I guess we'll just bring in any number of this stuff. Um, I'm not really sold on Blood Moons here. I'm not really sold on Light and Shadow. Same with Path to Exiles. Um, Bolts at least can help finish off Planeswalkers. I think the ley lines are really, really good here. One of our best ways of fighting our opponent's planeswalkers are with our own. This is really tough. Because, like, ley line is not, like, end-all, be-all good. Alright, let's do this. Let's go cut here, and then let's cut these two. Because Lingering Souls is not that great in front of Renin 6. Um, I think I like this configuration better. Oh, we know we we know we were done for. Yeah, because they were going to be able to go. Um, which, by the way, this sucks um, having two ley lines. But I think we're going to keep it and put one into play. Um, but anyway, we knew they were going to be able to draw the crypt command because they had a lonely sandbar in hand. So never mind. I, I feel better about my concession. I'm also going to keep this hand. We have a Kroxa uh, ransack into a season pyro. So I feel much better about this hand. Of course, this makes our blood moons very bad. That's okay. I will cry in the face of a spell snare. But that's okay. If they got a spell snare, they earned this one. They don't have a spell snare. Okay. Okay, I like that. So it checks upon whether they discard a land or not, not whether it went to the graveyard or not. So I like that.
Right, their mana is not great. Then again, neither is ours. So this is awkward, but I think I want to take the silent clearing here. Because it means we get to start playing Pyromancers next turn. Yep, opting. Also, something to note that's much smaller, but still significant, is um, Leyline shuts off Ren and Six pretty well. Okay, so they have three men up, so they could have a counter spell here of some form. Um, I actually want to jam this Liliana. Actually, no. I think they have a... Um, I think it's very likely that they have a Force of Negation in hand. Three men, Okay. It doesn't change much for us here. Um, I'm just packed with three drops at this point. Wellness Reclamation was, was going to suck. Yeah, unfortunately, they have like crypt, crypt commands and stuff. We just can't do anything about that. Yeah, that's a good draw. Yep, Crypto Command, and they bounce our Ley Line. Okay. Um, go with my last red fetchable land. That is very annoying, but, you know, what can we do? Sure. Yep. All right, season pyro again. All right, that's um it's a problem, but again, that's what we expected, right? This is about how we expected this to go. Fuck me. Come on, deck. Oh, boy. I can't remember the last time I lost interest in a match this fast, to be honest. I really don't. Um... Escalate this thing two modes. Let's get one of these out of our hand here. All right, Croxa. Discarding Brazen Borrower. So they got Cryptic Command and one unknown in hand. Uh, unfortunately, we got you the swamp, right? Yep. All right, well, I don't think we beat another Narset, do we? Right. Let's move on. We're not we're, we're not even competing at this point. All right. Uh we got an interesting hand here. I'm just going to bet we're playing a deck that Blood Moon's not good against. Hundred dollars, fifty dollars, five dollars. Please be ad nauseum. Holy shit! Please be ad nauseum. I have never in my life before wished for ad nauseum so much. 
as I'm about to. Please be ad nauseum. 100,000% ad nauseum. Pentad prisms to take. Um, we're taking Pentad Prism with the mentality that we're trying to Blood Moon them, so. Please don't have drawn Pentad Prism. Okay, good, they didn't. Sure, Thos is Oracle. Sounds good to me. Now, it's very important that we have to sequence our fetches right here. Because. Basically, what our plan here is is to I ain't even got to sequence my fetches right obviously they can stick Frexian Unlife we might be in a little bit of trouble but they had two of them so interesting And what are they naming with Spoils of the Vault? <laughs> I mean, um, um, yikes. Yeah. Okay, um, so they're a combo deck, which means I like these. Also a fan of this. Um, whoa, 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 what did I just do? Also a fan of this. Um, we want to aim strictly for disruption, so that being the case. Um, we're going to cut this. Go like this. Again, we're cutting the sword because we're bringing in Stony Silence. So. Alright, I mean, this hand's pretty good. If two discard spells into a Liliana can't get us there, I just don't think we're winning this match. Alright, Lotus Bloom. Next thing we'd love to find is a... Like I said, a Stony Silence here would be great. Marsh Flats is also fantastic. So we are just going to get a... I almost said Stomping Ground. A Blood Crypt here to Thoughtseize. Okay, so we got... I think we're taking Pentad Prism. Again, just trying to cut their mana because we can't... We can take one Frexian on life, but if we do, they're still left with another Frexian on life. I drew Seacrum Coast here. And, uh, I'm assuming... Yep. Well, I mean, that's a... Uh, Excellent play. Yeah, let's just Duresmo take the spoils. Um, it's going to be hard to kill them through this, but... Here's to hoping we just draw Stony Silence next turn. Oh. Never lucky. Oh. 
Here's hoping they don't have ad nauseum in hand. Could we have gone about that a different way? No, because there's no way we could have taken both. Like, them drawing the land meant there was no way we could take both their cards, so... Fucking really? Ugh. Yeah, I mean... There's just nothing we can do. Yeah, I got three spirit guides left. I guess we'll, we'll see what the last couple cards in their deck are. But all right, so they're playing Lightning Storm and okay. Um, I guess EEs for. Maybe let's cut one of you. Maybe you're not that good after all. And then... Maybe a Kroxa. Oh, I only need to cut two cards. Let's cut these two. Because at least if we set this on three, we can blow up the... Um, bullshit. Also, note we can set it on zero and blow up... Oh, fuck. We have to silence. All right, we're playing first. All right, this sounds great. We're going to keep it. This hand basically has everything we want. Um, fuck me sideways. Uh, so we got to grab a Sacred Foundry with this one. That's not the one I wanted. mean that makes this matchup a million times harder but not unwinnable I'm getting sacred foundry here let's open this so I don't grab the wrong land oh that's annoying Like, normally how our opponent's luck goes, they probably have, like, the perfect hand with that small amount of disruption. Mm -hmm. Alright, so spending Lotus Bloom. Serum Visions again. Well, on the bright side... The Stony Silence is going to do a good job of stopping this Lotus Bloom. Alright, they put two cards on top. And then Temple. Interesting. Alright, second Ransack. We're going to go and put this Batter Skull into play. And then I'm going to go ahead and Stony Sounds next turn. Same revisions. Alright, so now... They've drawn through their entire uh, scry. And bottom one top. Batter's going to play. Stone Forge. Alright, let's just go. Let's just go Stony. Mm 
Sack for five. We're gonna pass. Uh, this is gonna go get me, I think, a blood crypt. End of turn here. Mean spoils naming. All right, well, that wasn't a very eventful match, but sometimes that's the way it goes. Like, we had a pretty good situation against them. Um, I think we were going to win that game pretty pretty good no matter what. Um, I think they were, our opponent was a little too aggressive with the in, with the uh, spoils of the vaults. So, but either way. All right, we'll be back in just a minute with the next round. All right, welcome back, everyone. Here we are for game number four, or match number four, rather. Um, so this hand feels pretty good, right? It looks pretty good. We can get a swamp here. Only issue is we don't have an actual way of casting Blood Moon if we do that. But I think we're okay with that. I mean, the Sword of Light and Shadow is kind of like a mulligan, but the nice thing is most of our threats are black or red. So, yeah. I'm putting it's Jund. That would kind of spoil my cookie, not going to lie. Alright, that's a great draw. That means we can actually go get a red source with this one. And they have Tarmogoyf. We're going to take the Blood Braid. Um, yeah. We're going to answer this with Dreadborn next turn. Hell, even leave it behind. Although, we got to be careful. They are playing snow-covered. All right, they're playing basic. So, this, we're off the Blood Moon plan, plan here. I feel pretty strongly about let's just go off the Blood Moon plan. Croakza with two cards in hand. You know what? I just want to kill this because if we can start going in with Croakza, we're going to feel pretty good about that. So, um, they got two unknown. Obviously, the Liliana here would suck a little bit. Hmm. Well, Kroxa. I mean, they've just like literally just fetched around all of our game plan, but that's okay. Uh, we could have ransacked there that turn, but I think it's more important to try and just pressure them. Um, they drew another land, so they're good on lands. They, we get hit with blood braid here. That might be that'll be a little awkward. No blood braid. So this is awkward. We're going to have to go get a mountain here. Let's just get a swamp. I'm going to cut our, I'm going to cut us off of white, but that's okay. Fuck. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's ransack. I think I just want to take the land, honestly. I know it's going to be... A, it's already a land we have. Yeah, let's take the land. Oh, that's not what I wanted. It gives us two Kroxas. We can bring one back next turn. 
Um, we also have Lingering Souls, so we could actually go Souls... If we draw a land, we go Souls Command. Blood Raid? Every time! Alright, fizzles off the pulse. Which now actually makes me want to go kill Discard. Leave them top decking. Which I think that's what we're going to do here. Alright, yeah, we're going to go... Yep. So they have all basics, so our Blood Moons are just dead in this matchup. They're probably the Snow uh, snow Jund, or Moot Blood, blood Jund, or whatever they call it nowadays. Right, that's a good one. So here comes our second Kroxa. So they push it. They're going to get shot for three from that. Which, I mean, obviously that's not what we wanted, but it's fine. It's not the end of the world. Thoughts he's here going to take our Stoneforge, I'm assuming. It's a little awkward, but... Actually, they might take the sword. Nope, they just take the Stoneforge, so... This will get us a Godless Shrine. You know what? Now let's get Erd Mesa. And by Erd Mesa, I obviously meant Sacred Foundry. Right. So we're going to untap here. And we are going to go ahead and go. Souls. Sword. Pass. And now with this next turn, we can actually just start picking up Kroxas and attacking them. All right. So that was game one. It was much easier than I anticipated it would be. So we're going to go Damnations. We're going to go EEs, Chandra. I'm going to cut out my Blood Moons. And I'm going to cut out, actually, two of my discard spells. So I'm going to take out... Two Inquisitions. Now the reason I'm taking out some amount of discard is I still want to interact with some of their more difficult cards like their Planeswalkers, their Bloodbraid Elves, things like this. But in general, in the late game, I want to be drawing cards like Pack Rat, like Kroxa, like Chandra, like Season Pyromancer. I don't want to draw these discard spells that are just dead cards later in the game. Now we're taking out our Blood Moons. Traditionally, it's not good if we're both Blood Moon decks to be playing, keeping our Blood Moons in, because typically the way we're going to play the match is going to be in a manner so that Blood Moon doesn't affect us from our own side. So, of course, if our opponent is also a Blood Moon deck, then they're going to play the same way, like they did. They fetched all basics the entire game. And that was without any prior knowledge of what we were playing, and it's not like, even if they knew our account, it's not like we're known for Blood Moon decks. If anything, they'd be expecting us to be playing Jund or, you know, um, something like that. Um... So, or Grixis Control, or some wonky thing like that, so. Anyway, I'm going to run it back like this. These choices could be wrong. But we don't really know what and all they're doing differently from a normal Jun deck. Alright, I mean, this hand's pretty good. We got Thoughtseize into Kroxa, potentially into Command, um... If they lean on discard spell here, that's going to be a little rough for us, but that's okay. Yep, they're leading on Thoughtseize here as well, or Inquisition. No, they're cycling bear. That's a weird start. I am certainly confused by that. Um, so I'm going to actually hedge against the fact that they may have kept their Blood Moons in. I'm going to actually go get a Swamp here. In the long run, I don't think basic Swamp makes a difference. Compared to a, another red source. So they have Push, Liliana, and Leyline. Or I mean Leyline. Plague Engineer. So I'm going to take the Liliana. Um, we have a Colgon's Command that can deal with this Plague Engineer. Um, it's 
It's probably going to name Spirits, which means we're not going to get any use out of this anytime soon, but that's okay. Alright, well now we're going to lose our Kroxa almost certainly here, which is going to be a little, which is unfortunate. Um... Oh, they got another dis. Did they? Oh no, they can't have another discard spell. Yep. All right, they can draw another swamp. Right, we draw another land here. I'm gonna play this tapped. So if they go plague engineer naming spirits, we're gonna go Colgan's command kill it return Croxa, I think. They do not. Okay. All right, which means I'm going to sit back here. And we're just going to just pass the turn. I could have played the front end of this, but I don't really want to play the front end of this into a Plague Engineer. Right. Cascade Trigger, Liliana. I mean, that obviously sucks pretty bad there. Yeah, let's go ahead and discard souls. They discard Astrolab. Let's go ahead and make them discard and kill their Blood Braid. To which I'm assuming they're discarding Push here. They do. Well, that is not too surprising. One, two, three, four. All right. So let's go ahead and get. We got red. Let's get ourselves a blood crypt. And we're gonna shock this in actually. Let's Croxa get that last card out of their hand. Croxa goes away, and then we're going to bring back Plague Eng or the Lingering Souls tokens. All right. We're in a position now that, barring any really, really bad luck, we should be able to deal with what our opponent's doing. Or any really good top decks from them, of course. That's always a concern. I'm going to discard the EE here. Um, I think it's a lot more likely we might get a chance to play this Batter Skull than the Engineer Explosives. Which, you know what? Alright, we're going to go ahead. One, two, three, five cards. Leaving one croak to the left. We're going to shoot them for three here with this. We're going to attack in with the Lingering Souls tokens at Liliana. Applying what pressure we can to her. And I actually think I'm going to play the Marsh Flats. If they're going to plus us to get rid of this Batter Skull, that's fine. Um, doesn't concern me very much. Only way it does is they kill is Kroxa, but even then, us losing the Batter Skull puts us that much closer to bringing Kroxa back. Alright, kill a token. Make me discard a card. Well, that is actually a tad awkward, but Stone Forge. I believe we still have a sword, and right? Yeah, we do. Okay. Oh, ah, I forgot to attack with the spirit. Okay. It's fine. Down goes Lily. They take three. And I'm actually going to go ahead and do this just in case they do draw another one. Um, just get a blood crypt here. Now, they could be playing something like Damnation. And if they do, on the bright side, that means we get to bring back a Kroxa. Oh, no, we don't. We wouldn't get to bring back one yet. We'd have to uh, 
crack our land first. All right, so we got a pretty pretty convincing win there over Jund to get to that three and one territory. I felt really good. I uh, I gotta say, I think Kroxa is definitely the kind of card that makes this Mardu deck feel just that much better. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to the final round here. Thank you guys for tuning in. You guys are awesome. Some of the best fans ever. Um, I know the Esper decks were a little rough earlier in this week. But, um, yeah, I'm glad we're, we're coming in strong with this one. And I'm hoping we'll finish the week strong tomorrow with another uh, Patreon submitted deck list. And I'm hoping it'll be good. Um, I'm excited about it. I, of course, I'm excited about playing any deck that my Patreons want me to play. Um, because it's different, you know. I'm playing a deck with... Yes, I have my thoughts and feelings put into it, but I'm not changing anything before we start playing. I'm, I'm leaving it the way it was submitted to me, whether I think that's good or not, um, or correct or not. Good or not is not the right word, but whether I think the numbers are correct. So, Anyway, guys, we're going to go ahead and play the final round here. Thank you so much for tuning in. You guys are awesome, and I'll catch you guys in just a second. Alrighty, on the play for round five. Yes, I said. Um, I mean, this is a suspicious hand, but I think it's really good, actually. So I'm going to roll with it. Um, we got Stoneforge into either of our big three drops. Or we have Packrat, too. So this hand's even going to be hard to disrupt if our opponent's playing something like Jund. We also have a pretty smooth mana base, meaning we can go black-red. Um, they're down to four cards. Oh, my God. So Liliana, the Veil, just got much better. Um... We're not going to fetch right away. Um, and honestly, if Stoneforge Mystics are our only white card, we might just go along with the mentality of... Um, depending on what our opponent plays on one here, I think I'm going to just go Pack Rat on two. Alright, they're Tron. Alright, let's go... Sacred Foundry. Always yield, and yes. I'm going to get me that Batter Skull. I think Batter Skull is more likely to clock our opponent in a reasonable manner. Um, they're all Drazi Tron. Okay. I'm quite happy about that. We're going to go ahead and put this Liliana into play here. Um, yes, that's a good draw. Okay. Yes, that risks us losing our Batter Skull. But I think being able to pressure their hand is a much, much stronger play here to open on than, um, than not. Plus, if they go Thoughts Not to take our Batter Skull, we get to Liliana Edict. And next turn, we actually get to go ahead and play both of these. Ooh, they got nothing. Okay. What do we draw for turn? Inquisition of Kozilek. I'm actually going to Inquisition, see what they're working with. Oh, nope, I'm not. I'm stupid. Um, yeah, so you should always remember to pay attention to the cards you have in your hand because they could cost you. All right, so we're going to discard Pack Rat here, uh, which really, really is unfortunate. Uh, we're going to pass the turn here. Um, yeah, that, that felt real stupid. <laughs> We actually could have been in a great shape if we uh, would have just been smarter and paid attention. I mean, I don't think we're necessarily in a bad spot here, but you know what I mean. All right, living weapon. Um, I'm not going to fetch. Lightning bolt. All right, now we're going to fetch. Get a blood crypt. Go ahead and bolt you. Fucking dumbass. I keep forgetting about that chalice of the void. And I literally just triggered it a second ago, so... Draw two cards. Okay, so we're going to go in plus. Um, I'm actually going to put the Kroxa into the bin here. Because we can bring Kroxa back next turn. Which means we can empty their hand almost, or get close to emptying their hand at least. We could also just emblem our Liliana here next turn, but. Alright, Thought Not Seer. Sure thing. Goodbye, Lingering Souls. Sounds good. Play land. 
edicts. Yep, unfortunately, um, this is a matchup I think that's pretty awkward for us. But, obviously, them mulliganing like that is... Definitely makes it better for us. Um, I don't think this is a lightning bolt matchup, to be honest. Um... And speaking of better draws, we're on the mulligan. Um, Alright, I mean, this is a keep. I'm going to put Damnation back for right now. Opponent kept on 7. So we're going to lead Thoughtseize again. Once upon a time. All right, temple. All right. Inquisition. So I'm not going to lead on Inquisition despite the fact that that's normally the thing because I have a feeling we're getting Thought Knots here next turn. And sure enough, we were going to get Thought Knots here next turn. So, yeah. So, while normally the rule of thumb is you Inquisition, then Thought Seize, um, I just had that really strong suspicion with the Once Upon a Time for eight. Eldrazi Tower? Or Eldrazi Temple? Alright, map. And I'm assuming we're going to see a tower. Yep. Lingering Souls. Not something we particularly want to see. So, we're going to go ahead and get Arid Mesa again. Or, Jesus Christ, Joey. Arid Mesa is not the name of the Shockland. I'm going to go, yes. Find myself the Batter Skull. Because now that we see Karn the Great Creator, which I mean, we assume they had it anyway, we know that we are going to be very worthless against that card. Also, to note, they do have a Waste, so that they're not completely locked out of, against Blood Moon. Mm-hmm. Assume we're getting power plant and we're gonna play the power plant or mine, whichever. The point of importance was they were gonna draw land. So unfortunately, I'm just gonna put in a batter skull this turn. I don't think Inquisition does anything here for us. Okay, so Reality Smasher. I'm assuming that was a misclick on the no attack there. Land. Yep. And we'll, I mean, we'll inquisition him. Alright, so. I mean, like I said, there was... We could actually put the Lingering Souls in the bin to try and have a better chance at getting... Karn. Ratchet Bomb, I'm assuming. Snaring Bridge. Okay, well that's actually really good for us here. We're going to take that Snaring Bridge. They drew another Karn. 
which does in fact suck quite a bit. All right, they're down to two cards in hand. They got another Karn coming here. All right, they drew Blast Zone. Karn the Great Creator. What do we get in this time? Another Ensnaring Bridge? I hope not. Sundering Titan. Well, opponent, I have to say... Land? Whew, man. We are uh, getting very lucky with these rips off the top. Yeah. I mean, our opponent's right. That's, that's really not ideal. Um... Yeah, ghost quarter. Oh. It's a pretty good one. Goodbye, Kroxa or Lily? I'm assuming Lily, because if we draw a land, we can edict it away. Alright, well. Yep, trades. Land. Thank you, deck. Holy shit, finally. You're going to blow the blast zone? That is um, far from something we wanted to see there, but right, let's draw a land. We'll put this Kroxa back into play. That's great. Let's get a swamp. Kroxa. And then, we're going to attack Karn so that he can't just minus three to exile Kroxa. And now they got to find a way to deal with Kroxa, or Kroxa kills them next turn on the attack. Yep. Let's go to combat. Mm hmm. Yep. Pack rat and pass. Oof, relic's a great draw. Oh, they're right back in this one now. Yep, because this can get rid of pack rat and then we're in trouble. Yep, and I don't know what we can draw to get ourselves back into this. I mean, I guess Season Pyro would be good. Well, that Relic did it. That Relic definitely did it.
don't think it really matters. I mean, and that was our last Croxa, right? Oh no, we have one more in the deck, so I guess it's always technically that out. Yep. I mean, we still got a lot of good draws here. Interesting our opponent's not attacking. He wants to restart the game, or they want to restart the game. All right, well. All right, we need another Kroxa, ransack the lab. We don't have brutalities in, so we can't use those. All right. <laughs> uh, so our opponent legit restarts the game. I mean... I can't do anything about it, right? Like, we're just dead? <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I mean... Our opponent's got us here, right? Like, we're not winning this game, so... Uh, we can't beat our own stuff, so it doesn't matter. I'm just going to go ahead and... Let our opponent have this one. We are uh, quite close to being dead here. Yep. Oh, yeah. Like I said, very close to being dead here. Yep. And we're just gonna let him kill us. Mm hmm. Yep. And they get Big Daddy Karn, and then we just die. Yep. That's also something good to know. We now know they have Ugin the Ineffable. Well, yep. The funny thing is, if we had another land, we could have damnationed and uh, still been super dead, but had some small chance of staying in this. All right, so now we're going to play game three here. So, just seeing that, um, I still don't think I changed anything. Not even getting mad if I lose the match at this point. Hey, that's fair. <laughs> I, I thought we were in a match I was going to be able to win for sure there. All right, we're playing first. 
Um, and this is a keep. I mean, Inquisition is far from the best. I'm just going to go to Swamp to start off here. Inquisition. Well, certainly awkward that they do have the uh, the wastes. All right, let's draw something good here off the top. That is certainly something good here off the top. All right, no Eldrazi to play, which is nice. Well, that is nice. All right. Oh, I'm dumb. I needed to play Lily first. Yeah, that was stupid. I'm an idiot. I had to play Lily first there to be able to... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I should have lilied there. I'm stupid. And said we draw that. Well, that certainly sucks. But I'm sure you're going to Thought Not Serious this turn, and it's really nothing. Taking three. Tell someone, sure. All right, I mean... This is definitely not the race I want to be a part of, but... Alright, here comes Karn. Thought not Seer, that's a big whiff. Ransack. Path. Path. Oh, damn it. So we're dead. Yep, I don't know how we're beating this now. Our own Blood Moon's actually locked us out. Alright, yep. I We should have played... We messed up by playing the Blood Moon on turn 3. We should have played Lily. Let them take our Season Pyro. Yep. There's a, there's a very clear spot where we punted this game away. Um... Yeah, there's a very clear spot where we punted this game away, and uh, fortunately, that's the case. Yep, if they wouldn't have had this waste, we'd be in a good shape here. But yeah, just nothing we can do about the waste, man. 2-2 two, two Ballista. We're going to kill the Pack Rat for sure. Yep. Oh, boy. Huh. This game would have been quite a bit different, I think, if we would have stuck Liliana on three. Yep. Because that's what we wanted to draw. Was it a Blood Moon? Okay. I mean... Like I said, still feel like we're pretty dead here. Yep. 
them having the waste just that's more than we can deal with. Yep. Oh. Yep. Unfortunately, our uh, I think our blood moon actually is what killed us. So there I feel like our Blood Moon actually is what killed us. We sequenced it wrong. We should have gone Liliana into Blood Moon. Oh, I can't be mad. We still um, we still went 3 and 2. Um, that last match just... It was a fun one. Regardless of how it went, it was fun. Um, and I agree with their opponent. I kind of feel like they did steal it. But either that or we kind of punted it away. <laughs> Game 3 there. I, I kind of forgot my sequencing there. We were supposed to go Lily then into Blood Moon. Um... Or no, because then they would get the Thought Knot or Blood Moon away. I don't remember. If, anyway, if they wouldn't have had Wastes, we definitely would have uh, been way ahead in that game. Not even comparable. Um, but yeah, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, overall, Kroxa is great. I like the cards in this deck. I like this deck a lot. I hope you guys do too. Um, let me know what you think in the comment section below. And thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I'll see you guys in the next video.